right, Professor Davis here. We're going to talk about reproductive system diseases and disorders, but before we actually jump into the male and female reproductive system um, with these diseases and disorders, let's do a brief overview of the male and female reproductive system. So if we look at the anatomy and physiology, especially when we're talking about the male and female reproductive systems, we're going to see some major differences. And a lot of the other body systems, male and females are very similar when it comes to those structures that are present. In the reproductive system, there is a, there are some differences. Now, ultimately, physiology-wise, we see that they do produce hormones, whether it's male or female, and they do produce gametes. Gametes are the sex cells, but the sex cells are different. Males produce sperm, females produce egg. These structures are also going to be very different for the female because not only does the female produce the egg, it also has to then allow for when fertilization occurs, the development of the fetus and the baby. So there are going to be some different structures. So let's look at the female external structures first that are present. We see that you have the uvea. This is going to be the outer kind of opening or vault of the reproductive system. This is going to be lined by the labia majora and minor nora, which are known as kind of the lips that are present. We do see that the outer, the labia majora, are going to have hair that's present, whereas the minora, which are the inside, are just going to be hairless. We also see that there's the clitoris in this area. The clitoris is going to be the area of arousal for females. It is going to be homologous in the sense to the tissue that's found in the penis in males. We have the vestibule and vestibular glands. This is the opening that's going towards the vagina itself. This area is going to have glands that help produce mucus, and this mucus is going to um, help protect the vagina from potentially foreign invaders, but it also lubricates for intercourse. And then the vaginal orifice is also here, which is the opening into the vagina. Now you will notice as well in this picture that the urethra is a complete separate hole than the vagina. The urinary system and the reproductive system are not combined in females. We do find that there is a common um, exit in the reproductive system and urinary system in males, but not in females. Now, if we move on into the internal structures that are found with the female, we do find that we have the ovaries. The ovaries are the organs that actually produce the egg. They also produce several hormones that get released. They are what we would consider the, fe the female gonads. The fallopian tubes are going to be the tubes that connect the egg or kind of siphon the egg that's released by the ovary and directs it towards the uterus. So they are more of a connection. Now they're not actually connected to the ovary, they're just next to it. So the ovary is like here and the fallopian tube is here kind of setting over it. So when the egg gets released, it kind of sucks it up like a vacuum and it sends it towards the uterus. The uterus is a pear-shaped organ that sits on top of the bladder and this is the place where if fertilization occurs on the egg and it implants, this is where the fetus and baby will develop. We then have the cervix, which is the neck region that is going to connect the uterus to the vagina. And the vagina then is that opening out towards the outside. The female hormones that are produced by the ovaries are going to be estrogen and progesterone. Now, if we look at the male structures, we see the male has some external structures as well. These include the scrotum. The scrotum is going to house some internal structures that we call the testes, and then the penis. And the penis is this outer structure that actually has the urethra that runs through it. This is the structure that is linked both to your urinary system and the reproductive system in males. If we move to the internal structures, we have the testes. The testes are the male gonads, and they are the ones responsible for producing sperm, as well as producing testosterone. We see that the area right above the testes is called the epididymis. The epididymis is going to be responsible for maturing the sperm. As the sperm is made, it needs to mature in order to be successful in finding the egg. So this area is where it gets matured. And this is also an area that does some quality control. It checks the sperm out to make sure that it's good quality before it hopefully enters into the actual semen. Now, this is going to check for things like if the head's not made correctly on the sperm, if it has multiple tails, things like that. The vas deferens, guys, is a series of tubes that connects the epididymis to the ejaculatory kind of duct. These are going to be a series of tubes that transport the matured sperm. 
There's also some seminal vesicles here. Seminal vesicles are going to help produce the fluid that makes up the semen. This fluid is going to contain sugars as well as buffers so that it can help neutralize any urine that's left behind in the urethra, but also has sugars in order to provide energy to the sperm so that they can swim and find the egg. It's kind of like packing them a lunch in a sense and getting them ready to go on that adventure to looking for the egg once they're deposited inside of the female. We also see there's some other glands that help with the production of this semen as well. There's the Bartholomew's gland and the prostate gland. So these are all going to produce different secretions that help aid the sperm in their travels as they leave the male and enter into the female. Now let's talk real quick about some common signs and symptoms that we see with the reproductive system. So in females, some of the common signs and symptoms are going to be things like abdominal and pelvic pain, uh, fever and malaise where they just don't feel good, abnormal vaginal discharge, burning and or itching in the genital area, pain during sexual intercourse, any change in the breast tissue could be a sign or symptom and abnormal discharge from the nipples. So these are going to be the common signs and symptoms for the female reproductive system. On the other hand, for the males, we see that they can have urinary disorders because the urinary system is going to be linked to the reproductive system. So this includes things like frequency, dysuria where they have pain with urination, nocturia where they need to go to the bathroom in during the night continuously, and even incontinence. Males can also have pain in their pelvic region as well as the growing and reproductive organs. There could be lesions on their external genitalia, swelling of the reproductive organs, abnormal penile discharge, and they can also have burning itching of the genitals as well. So diagnostic tests are going to be a little bit different based on male and female. In female, we see that there is going to be a bimanual examination that is done a lot of times when women go into the, the gynecologist. We also see that they can do a, a hysterosalpinogram. This is going to be where they take an x-ray or a type of imaging where they're going to look at the female reproductive system. One of the most common tests that we see with the with females are going to be the pap smear of the cervix where they're going to scrape some cells off the cervix in order to take a look at them. A pathologist would look at them and see if they're abnormal in any way and this is going to help detect hopefully cancer if cervical cancer is present. We also see that they could do a cervical biopsy if they do notice that there's potentially some cells that are abnormal and this is where they actually pinch and, and kind of cut off a piece of the cervix cervix. Another one is the cone biopsy. And guys, a cone biopsy gets its name because it takes kind of like a cone shaped piece from the cervical tissue, but it also includes some of the endro cervical lining, which is inside of the uterus. So it's not just scraping the actual outside of the cervix. It's going a little deeper into the uterus. We also see there could be a dilation and curatage, and this is also known as a D and C. This occurs whenever, um, endometrial cancer is discovered. They'll do like a type of biopsy that's deeper and this is going to involve a kind of surgical dilation that is sedative where they're going to do some dilation of the cervix and they're going to scrape the uterine endometrial lining. DNC is also commonly performed with the uterine bleeding following a spontaneous miscarriage or abortion. And so what they do is they have to go in and clean out all of the dead tissue when a miscarriage occurs. And when we we look at this, they're going to, again, remove that lining, the endometrial lining, which is the lining inside of the uterus. We also see there can be some laparoscopy that could be done where they go in with the camera to take a little closer look. A mammography or a mammogram can be done to look at the breast tissue, and then even blood tests could also be performed. In males, they may do a digital rectal exam. Um, they could also do a cystoscopy. A cystoscopy is where they go in with the camera through the urethra, the penis, that area to the bladder. So they could also check out parts of the reproductive system as they do that as well. Biopsies could also be done in order to check for tumors or potential cancer. And then laboratory tests can also be looked at. Now, when we look at laboratory tests for males, this includes various prostate specific antigen tests to look for things like prostate cancer. All right, the last little thing in this kind of like intro or review I wanna talk about has a little bit to do with 
with with women and their cycle that takes place this does deal with hormones and there's a lot of things and factors that go on in order for this process of creating an egg and potentially getting it ready for implantation to occur you'll notice that the hypothalamus is going to be part of this in releasing gonadotropic releasing hormone this is going to cause the anterior pituitary to release follicle stimulating hormone as well as LH. You'll see that they are released at different stages and during different parts. There's an ovarian cycle that takes place in the ovaries in women throughout the month where they release the egg through ovulation halfway through. And then you also see there's a uterine or menstrual cycle that takes place and this is inside of the uterus. So there's a lot of different factors that go into play when we talk about that monthly cycle in females, which does lead to some of the problems that we will discuss in the next um, lecture. All right, so this kind of just finishes up a little bit of the intro to the reproductive system. Again, if you have any questions or concerns, let me know. But we're going to follow this up with a female, mostly focusing on female reproductive disorders. And then we'll do one that finishes up the chapter looking at male, as well as some of the STDs and that sort of thing. So again, any questions, please let me know.